we've seen that none of these people have done any due diligence and have ever talked to, spoken to, got quotes from, interviewed anything of anyone involved, both instructors or participants, graduates, or people who maybe medically dropped out, or even people who quit. Like at least get information from someone who was there. If you want to talk crap about it, at least get it from maybe someone who quit that might talk crap, and you still might have a hard time finding those people that are going to think badly about that actually were involved in it. So the only people, basically this person that was talking crap and saying this alpha male bootcamp is trash, why would someone pay 18K? The only people who are talking bad about something are people who have no clue about it, who've never had one single conversation with anyone involved in any capacity. Think about that. That's why Fox News wanted to reach out and do actual, I don't know, work, due diligence, journalism. And so let's dive into this alpha male bootcamp. I love saying it because it's so, it's so much fun. And you What's up, freaks? Welcome to another episode of the Steve Eckert Show podcast. And let me tell you, I get excited for this show every week for recording this. Like, this is our time. We were locked here in my office, me and Tyson. We're having some fun. We're talking some shit. We're going deep into topics that Tyson's learning about. But I can't think of a, an episode that I've been this excited to do. And we are talking about alpha male boot camps. Yes, alpha male boot camps. It's actually a term that's a joke around our house because you hear it all the time on the internet and especially when they're talking about me or the project or coaching or whatever, they talk about the alpha male boot camp. And just a couple of days ago, I was a, a guest on Fox News and we talked about alpha male boot camps. And the reason why they reached out is because they, they've seen a lot of the hate and the haters and the the people who dedicated their lives to making YouTube channels where they just gossip and talk about other people. And they've seen these about this alpha male boot camp, which we are, we are part of one of the things that they talk crap about, which is the project. And they said, but the thing is, we've seen that none of these people have done any due diligence and have ever talked to, spoken to, got quotes from, interviewed anything of anyone involved, both instructors or participants, graduates, or people who maybe medically dropped out, or even people who quit. Like at least get f information from someone who was there. If you want to talk crap about it, at least get it from maybe someone who quit that might talk crap, and you still might have a hard time finding those people that are going to th think badly about that actually were involved in it. And the thing that made me make this episode right now is, is someone commented on, on one of my videos about, I think it might have even been on that video from the Fox News, the most profound comment that they, they had, and it said, no one speaks well about this program except the people that are involved in it or know about it. And they thought that they were talking crap, but it was so, it was of oh, oh, no shit. So the only people, basically this person that was talking crap and saying this alpha male boot camp is trash, why would someone pay 18K? The only people who are talking bad about something are people who have no clue about it who've never had one single conversation with anyone involved in any capacity. Think about that. That's why Fox News wanted to reach out and do actual, I don't know, work, due diligence, journalism. And so let's dive into this alpha male boot camp. I love saying it because it's so, it's so much fun and, and you'll never hear me use the term alpha and, and the comments are always filled with, you think you're an alpha, you call yourself alpha. I've never once used the word alpha except when I'm talking shit about people who use the word alpha or if I'm talking about my dog, Dragon. He is the alpha of our pack of, of dogs. We have the pit bull, boxers, Doberman mixes, and all kinds of stuff. Dragon is the alpha. When it's a, the animal kingdom, there absolutely is an alpha. That's the only time you'll hear me talking about it. Or when I'm having fun talk, talking shit about the, the, the little girly mans that are on the internet talking about alpha male boot camp and all this other stuff. It's, it's freaking funny. That's the only time that you'll see it. And, and one of the things that that the host on the Fox News said that I thought was pretty funny is they, they said they would the alpha male boot camps will beat the beta out of you. And, and I thought that was pretty funny. And I actually want to steal that line because I don't use the term beta either, alpha beta. I don't get inside a whole conversation and comparison and bullshit. The people in the comments section do, but I don't. But also the people in the comments section never had a single conversation with anyone that has anything to do with any alpha male boot camp, especially not the project. So I figured why not get it straight from the source? This is an insider look straight from the source and we're going to talk all about it. And I think a way to, to go right into it, pull my tablet over here so I can read this off. 
This is a, a text message, an unsolicited text message I just received just yesterday morning. This is from Kenny, who's our, the oldest graduate ever of the project, 60 years old. But then people say, oh, why don't you just join the military? Why don't you just join the army? And you can get paid to do this stuff. Well, I, well, guess what? Kenny is 60 years old. He's not joining the army. He'd probably love to. He'd, probably, he'd be, he'd be a, a great at it. But he's not joining the army. This is just a random message that came in, a text message. Hey, brother, just thinking about you. Getting kind of tired of people in my world at this moment, but remembering that it's not about us, but about others. Learn that from you, brother. Hope you have a good Friday. And this was right before Easter and on Good Friday. So this is just a random message. And I'll wake up to a message like this, either a text message, an email, a voice note, an Instagram DM, pretty much on a daily basis coming from men who have been through one of our programs, whether it's the Project or the Squire program, which is a father-son program, or the Masogi, which is just a one-day fitness challenge, or in any of the the coaching programs that we do, the Free Father Alliance, the Men's Mentorship Group Coaching Program, I will get a message at least one a day, randomly, like this, coming in from men that actually know about, that actually have been through it. See how that works? You need to know about something. You need to get information about it, not just seeing a a 15-second clip of something. And we're going to get into all that. This is going to be probably a a pretty longer, in-depth episode. Cameraman Tyson's probably not liking the sound of that. There's going to be a longer episode. He likes when we bang these out in like 15, 20 minutes, 25 tops. This one might go a little longer because we're going to have some fun with it. We've got a lot to get into, a lot to dive into. So let's now dive into this alpha male boot camp. So they, they talk about the price. Let's start with the price. And we're going to tap into all of the little things that people are like, well, uh, you didn't comment, I re- respond to my comment. I broke down everything about it and you have nothing to say about it. I'm going to talk about why does it cost so much? Why is it so expensive? Let's first off think about this. So it's $18,000 currently. It's been much lower in the past. It's the, the price has changed depending on how big of a class we wanted to make it. So it's $18,000 right now. And people say, why would it be cost that? You are just out for the money grab. You are taking advantage of people and just looking to make money. Well, here's the first thing, dipshit. We don't make any profit on the project. Now, these also, you could tell this comes from people who never ran a business, never had any real responsibility, never were in charge of anything, never ran any live in-person events, that at least, or at least ones that were worth a damn. So the project is our premier high-end event, and it's actually a side project. They, they talk about the millions of dollars we're making in the project, taking advantage of people. This is a side project that we do in addition, outside of our main businesses, all of the instructors, since the beginning of it, we do it outside of our main businesses. This is a passion project. That's why it's called The Project, because we were working on it, saying, what are we going to call this thing? It's just it's, it's, it's this passion thing, a passion project, The Project. That's exactly what it is. And then the men that come in, they are The Project. They are building themselves. The project is themselves by taking themselves and their lives and their family and their fitness and their finance and their faith to the next level. So, that's the first thing. There, no one, that, anyone that talks about eighteen thousand dollars expensive. There's so many places to dig into this. So I said, we, this, this could be five different episodes, but I'm going to put it all into one, and I don't care if it goes an hour long. I don't care if, yeah, cameraman, I don't care if it goes two hours long. We have so much to dig into. I'm so passionate about this. I could talk about this shit all day. But the problem is, people don't want to know about it. They just want to see a 15 second video, and then because they're insecure with their lives, they they'll talk all all kinds of shit about stuff when they know nothing nothing about it. Here's the funny thing. If you took, so we're, in, we're going into the 20th class of the project and we say it's 75 hours. Can you count, I mean, cameraman, do that on the side. Count out 75 class hours times 20 classes. How many hours? Or 19 classes. Do it on your, you have a calculator. Do it on your calculator. 75 times 19. So we've done 75 hour classes and that's just the actual class itself. 19 of them. If you took the, the video footage that we've actually put out about all the classes combined, I'd say like it's, 15 seconds here, 30 seconds here, 60 seconds here, maybe a minute and a half here and there. How much? 1,425. 1,425 hours of the project. Awesome. So there have been 1,425 hours of project. That's just the actual class itself. That's not the prep work. That's not the months and months of preparation the men go through. That's not the years that they deal with afterwards. Just the hour of the actual program, the four-day program itself. 1,425 hours. But if you took the content that we put out there, very selective content that we release out into the public. It would, I would say, 
an hour, maybe eh, 20 classes, two hours, three hours, maybe even if it was 10 hours, let's say 10 hours. I'll even say 10 hours. I really don't know. I'm making this number up. I don't know, but I know it's not a ton because it's literally a 15 second clip here, a 60 second clip there. Let's say 10 hours. If that, probably not even, definitely less than 10%, five, 10 hours out of 1,425 actual hours of the program. And people see just a 15 second clip of some of that five hours that's been released over the last five years and will make all the judgments, they know everything about it. They could tell you everything about the program. They know everything about all the people, the instructors, the, the candidates, the graduates. They know everything about the program. They're experts on the subject. And that's the problem with men these days is they're fucking know-it-alls. They, have, they need this instant fix, this instant gratification. They think they're entitled to something and, and they see something and they need that quick fix and, and technology and the internet has made them so complacent and fucking lazy and approval seeking and following the crowd that they see someone else say, oh, it's so expensive. You're ripping these people off. It's a scam. You're a snake oil salesman. And they'll say, yeah, man, me too. Me too. I think that too, because this dude thinks it and none of us have a fucking clue what we're talking about. But let's all jump on the bandwagon and talk shit about it. We have no idea. How about try this? Have a conversation with someone involved. And then you'll say, oh, well, I saw the 15 second video and that's all I needed to, needed to know about the program. We'll get into that in a second too, because that's fucking hilarious. But let's get back to the $18,000. You can see why we're going to be here for a while. There's so many branches to talk about here, and I fucking love it. And hey, listen, I'm open to a conversation. This is, I'm open to a conversation with anyone that is not just uh, one of the turds that just says some ridiculous shit on the internet. We'll get into some of that stuff too. I'm open to a conversation about it. Let's, let's jump live on, your, on your, your show or your platform or your podcast or whatever it is that you go and talk shit about on your own by yourself in your little studio. I'll, I'll come on there live. And we could chit, chit chat about it. You can find out all the actual real details. It's called due diligence. It's called having a tough conversation. It's called having, getting some feedbacks, actually finding out, doing the work, but that would be a lot harder than just finding some clips and then saying some nonsense you have no clue about. Let's get back to the $18,000. Here's the first problem I have with people who say it's so expensive and this and that. That's the original problem right there. Imagine this, that if you could... Get rid of that low self-esteem and low worth and low ambition that you have and that fixed mindset you have that thinks that $18,000 is so expensive. Like there were people who said, well, only less than 1% of the population can afford $18,000. And if, if someone can afford $18,000, they don't need any coaching because they're set. Like what? I've coached millionaires and billionaires whose lives were a mess and needed help in their discipline, in their personal development, in their health, in their fitness, in their relationships, in the way that they are fathering their family. So to think that if you have $18,000 that you might have saved up or maybe use a credit card or whatever, that if you have 18, if you could afford $18,000 that you're set, that just shows the low self-limiting beliefs, the, 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 the roof, the lid that you, these people have put on themselves. Imagine this. If someone can get you to break through that self-limiting belief and barrier where you think $18,000 is so expensive, imagine if someone could get you to think that it's not that expensive and start making you think a little bit bigger and a little bit differently and have a different perspective on life. That skill alone, that breakthrough alone by itself is worth a thousand times $18,000 because you're stuck in this world. I can't imagine like living it. My son, who's 12 years old, and my daughter, who's 10 years old, looks at this, looks at some of these comments I'll show, we'll talk about and laugh about. They're like, they think $18,000 is so much? Like, how about you think bigger? How about you set some bigger goals and dreams and actually do more and make more of an impact? And they'll say, oh, well, that's because you're scamming people. We'll get to that too. Oh, you're only have any success or money because you're scamming people. Sure, sure, buddy. Or you can stop thinking so small and think that like, imagine that the bullshit stories you must tell yourself in your head, the self-limiting beliefs you must have, the fixed mindset to think that $18,000 you're, you're talking about, like it's the equivalent to a million dollars. There have been guys who come through the program. Yes, that are millionaires. There's been guys who come through that are, there was an 18 year old that came through. That's Lucas. And you know what he's doing now after before, by the time he turned 19, he's making over a hundred thousand dollars a year, actually working in sales for another graduate that he met in the program. Holy shit, look at that. Connections, networking, opportunities, careers, breakthroughs. We're just scratching the surface. 
we are just scratching the surface. So 18,000, these, these are men on top of that, the people who come into the project, they're like, you're just taking advantage of, of vulnerable men. But you just said if someone has $18,000, they're, they're, they don't need anything or whatever else. So how vulnerable really are they? These are men who know what they're getting into. They consciously sign up for it. They've seen all the crazy, scary videos that you've seen of the 15 seconds. And you know what they also do is they meet with the instructors for months, sometimes up to a year before their class, preparing, they're on a fitness program, they're preparing meeting on a weekly call, they're getting set up on a daily fitness program with daily accountability and check-ins for the months and months and months leading up to their class. And then once or if, and that's a very big motherfucking if because we see the, the quality of men that are out there in the world just based on the comments section, but if they graduate, then they, we, we have regular constant connection like this message. This message I got from Kenny the other day, or yes, whatever that was, that message, he graduated over two years ago at 60 years old, and there's regular interaction, regular connection, regular growth going on. So to think that $18,000, a million dollars, that's the first freaking problem. And then on top of that, let's go on just a business. Let's go on just a straight, rational freaking uh, business side of things. Let's go into it. Let's go into numbers. Like it's so expensive. You're just in it for the money grab. You are, are just taking advantage of these people. First of all, how much does insurance for an event like that cost? Because because the people who did this and never ran shit in their lives. They just sit at, at like just the fact of someone that takes the time out of their day to put comments like this and wait to hear some of the comments. We're going to get to that here in a moment, but takes time out of their day. And then they wonder why they're not married or why they're on their third, third divorce or why they, no one wants to marry them. They wonder why, because that's how you're spending your free time. I had some dude say, these guys are charging $18,000 for something and I can't even find a job. I'm in the wrong line of business. Like, holy shit. No wonder you can't find a job, motherfucker. You're sitting there making comments on the internet. Stop scrolling and trolling and go work on yourself, work on your development, g learn the skills to go and actually, I don't know, sell something, market something, have some value to the marketplace. How about that? That'd be amazing. Because these are the things that go on. And we're going to die, continue diving deep into all this. The next one is, why don't they just join the military? Well, here's the, the uh, fact of it. First of all, off over 20% of the men who have... have graduated the project are either military veterans, active military. Yes, we have active military guys that have gone through the program that are still in the military. We have firefighters, paramedics, police officers, and I'm talking about active in all those. And actually our two paramedics that work at the project that are on hand full time are graduates from the project and they are still active firefighters, paramedics. And guess what? That's Many of them were also recently in the military. Some of them were in the military for a long time. Some of the military for just, just got out. And oh well, and, and let's go back to that 18,000. So how do you think those paramedics are paid? Do you think that we can get 24-hour paramedics on and they're just it's just for free? They're getting paid for that. Do you know how much? All right, let's even just think. Axes. We have say 30 guys register for a class, whether that many show up or not, we get an ax. It's a custom engraved ax for the ones that graduate. So we have to order 30 of them. Those are, I don't even know, 50, 60, 70 bucks each times 30. Do the math. There's t-shirts for each guy. There's backpacks. There's a graduation dinner, a catered full graduation dinner from a freaking luxurious steakhouse that's cost tons and tons of money, thousands of dollars. There are rental vans that we need for the entire four days for the day before and the day after for all the team. There's rental cars that we need for the paramedics, rental cars for the junior instructors. We have to fly out the instructors. We have to fly out all the junior instructors because we have graduates who come back and volunteer their time, but we still fly them out. We have to put them in hotel rooms. We have to have a place to stay for the 30 candidates and feed 30 candidates for four days. Start doing the math. You have to also have insurance for an event like this. See, people that talk about, oh, you're just in it for the money grab. We don't make shit on this program. This is a thing of fulfillment. This is a thing that is a part of our purpose of what we're put on this planet to do, to do events like this and things like this, the Squire program, which is a father-son program, which is just one day and it doesn't take as much and it's not as big of a, a financial bur like stress or burden on it. And so think about that, that paramedics that I thought about, they, they get paid that maybe go back to that 18,000. Like 
People who did that never did a, a profit and loss statement. They don't understand financial statements or business. We also have to have a place that all these people have to stay. They don't, and they talk about, oh, you're just behind a Walmart. Actually, that's a custom made million dollar private gym. It's one of those locations. And then another location, someone saw it. They're like, oh, you're just in this dirt lot out in the woods. Actually, that's a 27 acre privately owned ranch by one of the instructors of the project. That is over $9 million invested into it so far. And that's where it goes. But yeah, we're behind a Best Buy dipshit. Sure. See, this is the problem. People talk about stuff they have no fucking clue about. No clue. So now it's going to the, to the why don't you just join the military? So, and then, so some of the instructors aren't, had never were in the military. Some of them were. Listen, I was not. I was in the military. I was in the air wing, and they say, "Oh, you were a pogue, a pogue, a pog," which means you weren't in the infantry. And because I wasn't in 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 during the combat years, and I was already out of the military, they say, "Oh, well, who would ever listen to someone who was just a pogue? Who would ever take advice from a pogue?" So, according to that logic, if you were in, the only person you should take advice from are military grunts infantry who were in combat because if you weren't who would ever take advice from you it makes no fucking sense so no one in the world could be a coach could be a father could be a leader could run a company could be an entrepreneur if you were because you're a pogue or what if you weren't in the military at all forget it you might as well just go i don't know bash your head against the wall kill yourself because you weren't there you weren't good enough for that like it's it's crazy like i almost think like thank god i wasn't in infantry and thank God I was a pogue. You're just a pogue. Like it offends me. So uh, thank God I wasn't because if maybe it doesn't, didn't lead to transferable skills and I'm going to now spend my life as an adult on the internet just commenting, hey, you're just a pogue, man. Why are you doing this? You're a disgrace to the veteran community. Okay, but I'm not the one commenting on other people shit on the internet getting all butthurt about it. And on top of that, I'm going to read a, another message that came in. This is actually from our most previous class, which seemed to get a lot of hate this class for some reason, because I was yelling. I was yelling. This is from a graduate from this class who is a, also a Marine, and he got out, I think, in 20, 2021. So just recently, this is a modern-day Marine. His message, the day after the project, thank you for everything you did for us this week. This is from Evan. Thank you for everything you did for us this week. I found a part of me I lost and needed to find again in order to apply to the real world out of the military and into my businesses now. I have a higher level view of life again, and that is invaluable. Can't wait to connect more and start contributing to this community that I am beyond honored to be a part of. This is just the start. But why don't you just join the military? He actually was in the military. 20%. Are veterans. And then you, when you add in police, firefighter, paramedic, probably closer to 30%. So there goes that whole, and look at Kenny, 60 years old. And some people aren't really built just to join the military because you want to work on your personal development. This program has nothing to do with the military. It just happens that some of the instructors were in the military. Some were in combat, some weren't. Shit, the other instructors have light years more military experience and, and combat and all this other stuff than I do. And you know what I do? I learn from them shitloads what I can learn from. And I follow them when they are leading in areas that aren't my expertise, just as they will follow me in areas of my expertise that maybe is not their zone of genius or air of expertise. But, oh, wait a minute. How could a infantry guy learn from a pogue or a non-military guy? Bedros is not in the military. And it, it, a post recently said that he's uh, his work built, built up businesses to $200 million. And someone said, oh, what kind of credential is that? He wasn't even in the military. <laughs> what? So you're in the military, building up $200 million is not a credential. It's not something like, shit, I might want to listen to this motherfucker when it comes to business. But the project has nothing to do with the military. Just join the military. We're not making, it's not a four-year contract that we're doing. These people are not training to go to war. They're training to be better husbands better fathers, better entrepreneurs, better leaders, or maybe to unfuck themselves after they got out of the military and lost their sense of purpose. Like it, like the 90% of the, of the comments section on the internet. 
And then they're, then they, they tell me, you're 125 pounds soaking wet, and the next post is, you're all steroided out. Like, which one is it? Because I I mean, if I took steroids, I got, I got the bad end of the stick. But here's a, a challenge. I get, I get it all the time that, oh, it's just a, a steroid rant. You have to be on steroids to be there. And then another one made fun of me because I was bald. They said, oh, you're losing your hair. That's why you're all pissed off. Like, what the fuck? You're bald. You're on steroids. Here's this. The, the, and, there, and, and, these, and all these, a good amount of these comments are coming from veterans. Here's a, a good one. Is, well, well, and we'll get to results of some, some of the, the people, but here's a good one. The, the, so I did a video. There was an introduction there. And I'll actually, I will tell my opinion on this right now about how, the content we put out about the project. When I think about it, I think the, the, the people have shown they're correct, that we put out probably stuff behind the scenes that we shouldn't put out. We should have just put out the cool stuff, a little bit of the edgy stuff, but some of the stuff we started putting out, I'd say after like class 10, we really didn't show much stuff until class 10. After that, we started showing a little more behind the scenes, a little more chaos because it was cool and maybe it's going gonna, it's gonna to get these debates on the internet. It's going to go viral and some of them have gone viral into the multi-million of millions of views. But the problem is we thought it would be Cool to show the behind the scenes and some of the craziness, thinking that people would see it. But we didn't think that people are so short-sighted and small-minded and fixed mindset and stuck in their ways and so resentful and hateful and not willing to do any kind of due diligence or work. They'll see a 15-second clip and they will account for 1,425 hours off of a 15-second clip. So if I would say one mistake that we make with the project is that. Probably put too much stuff out there because the average simple-minded person is they can't comprehend it. They can't process it, that that's just a little piece of the puzzle, and that's probably intentional. And at this point now, we, we put out the shit just to troll the trolls. I'm sitting there slamming my knife on the thing and talking about I'm going to cut the, the tattoo off my hand if any of the people that, that don't belong there actually graduate. And then people say, well, why aren't you cutting off? We're waiting for you to cut off your tattoo. Well, because the people that made it to graduation deserved to be there. So there was no need for it to be cut off. See, no one is like has the logic or the reason. You think I don't know when I'm stomping the thing on there and I see someone pull out their phone and start recording it? You think I don't know that there's going to be all that hate nonsense? At this point, we're just trolling the trolls because we've already put too much stuff out there. We've already decided we're ending it. So have a blast. Go talk all the shit you want. Keep, keep bumping up the algorithms for us. Like It's almost a semi- unintentional social experiment when I do stuff like that. And the video itself proves a point because the point is we are teaching these men emotional control, emotional discipline, emotional re regulation, emotional resilience, how not to freak the fuck out. And the comments are, oh, if anyone talks to me like that, I'll knock them the fuck out. Okay, that's the whole point. You're proving the point of, this, of the video of me acting like that to him. The point is we are bringing chaos there to, for these men to have the self control, because if you think you could go around and you're and you're not you're not just gonna every person that you don't like you're just gonna go punch in the face. Sure you are, tough guy. Sure you are. Your dumb ass would be in jail, and then you wouldn't see your kids if you even have them. But you're probably too afraid to have them in the first place. But that's besides the point. But you wouldn't like the whole point is you can't just go punch everyone in the face you don't like. Unfortunately. That's no, I mean, what way is that any way to live? Especially when you're so short minded, you'd be punching probably 80% of the people you'd be punching in the face don't deserve it. Probably 20% do deserve it, but you would just go off with this little tidbit of information and your limit, limited mindset and your fixed mindset and go punch someone in the face and then realize, oh shit, that's not what they meant by it. It's me. I misunderstood it. It's me. Punch yourself in the face, motherfucker. Go fight club on your ass. Have some fun. Have at it. Like that's who needs to get punched in the face yourself. When you're a grown man, and you're so entitled and triggered and resentful when you see something, a little two-second clip of something on the internet. Literally, someone could see me, let's just say, someone could see me stomping the, the, the knife on the table and screaming, and they would write a man and say, oh, you're a pogue, you're a pogue, how dare you do this? I was, I was driving tanks, you don't deserve to make money, I do. Well, then go do something to make money, motherfucker. But on top of that, I could literally be done stomping it. And then the second I'm done, there could maybe be another video or maybe not because no one isn't, I don't, no one isn't entitled to, I need context. No, you don't. 
I think you deserve context. But just say, let's say there was another part of the video that said, and that's exactly how not to act. We are doing this so that you have the self-control to not freak out and lose control of your emotions like you've told us you've done in the past in your interview process for signing up for the project because we know about you and your history and your family and you had struggles with the law because you were losing your temper and getting in bar fights. So we're giving, putting this chaos there in front of you just as a little test for yourself to control your shit. Someone wouldn't care if that is after. I'm not saying that is what's after. I'm just saying they don't even have the, the time or the mental capacity or the attention span to find out what's going on or why something's get done. It's just, this is no way to act. That is not a leadership. You should be ashamed to be a Marine. You are frowned upon in the veteran community because you're a pogue. I'm just a pogue ass motherfucker who's loving life, living my ultimate lifestyle that has dinner with my family and kids seven days a week, works out my family seven days a week, lives in my dream home, living the dream life. I work from home. I, I, I do homeschooling with my kids. Hell yes, I am just a pogue. And I'll tell you what, I wouldn't have it any other way. I'm exactly right where the fuck I need to be. And the, the, the fact of that video, again, is that it was a semi, semi unintentional social experiment as we're trolling the trolls to show how men are reacting. I actually pulled up the comment section or talked about the comment section to the men in the program later on the next day because that first 24 hours, yes, it's chaos, it's noise, and that is intentional. That is my job. They, are, they know exactly what they're getting into. They, they're told what they're getting into. They've seen previous videos. This is what they want. I am told afterwards, this is exactly what I needed. I needed this so that I could learn to control myself and calm down. Oh, why don't, but why don't you just go to therapy? None of you are, are clinical psychiatrists and psychologists and have any this and that and therapists. No shit, we're not therapists and we don't try to be therapists. And guess what? Many of these people have been to therapy or many of these people are recommended to go to therapy or some people don't come there because they should go to therapy instead. We are also not naive enough to believe that this is the only form of personal development for men, but it is a damn effective form as shows the 250 graduates that have gone through. And if anyone that has these YouTube channels that talks all their nonsense when they know no clue about what they're talking about had a conversation with any one of those 200 and something graduates, they would have actually know the truth and find out and have actually have some actual credible information. And so I have the, the haters. Let's go back to the comments because this is great. This came from a military veteran who was a in the infantry, supposedly, I guess he was, he was going Rambo out there on those terrorists, apparently said, if I was in combat with him, he would have purposely shot me in the head and just act like it was accident, fog of war, friendly fire. But that's who I should have strived to be like. And I'm just a pogue. This is coming from a military veteran who I'm frowned upon in the military community. Another one of them in the military community said they wish I would have stepped on a landmine. Awesome. Another one. This is my, 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 a couple of my favorites. And we're just getting to ones off the top of my head. Another one said, I wish your grandmother would get gang raped. That's fine quality comments. The second comments come in like that, or they just put a emoji of a clown, or they say all these other terms. I don't even know the terms. Like they're, they're, They use these like millennial military, I don't even know, online social media terms. I don't even know what they are. Sometimes I look them up. Sometimes I don't, depending on if I feel the need to or if I'm bored or something, but they wish my grandmother would get gang raped. And then another one says, you pogue, you're just a pogue. Who would ever listen to a pogue? I'll poop in your mouth. <laughs> I'll poop in your mouth. That's definitely someone who, why would I take? And they, and then they'll say, who would ever take advice from a pogue? Who would take advice from a dude who's saying he's going to go poop in some other dude's mouth? That's just some weird, eerie shit. But I'm evil for being Mr. Pogue because I was in the air wing. And apparently I scored decent on a freaking ASVAB test and they put me in some position doing something. And, and, and also on a side note, let's, let's, let's go to the realness of it. When I found out you go to, you go to Marine Corps boot camp which everyone goes to the same Marine Corps boot camp. And where I'm from in my era, they say, you know, we are all Marines and I show respect to everyone in the military. But nowadays you get out and you're resentful or maybe you have PTSD. And, and if you are, you should go see some help. If you have any mental illness, like I fucking feel sorry for you. And I have hugs. I'll give hugs to those haters that need it. Hugs for haters is a new movement. And the, 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 they get out and they have this resentment and it, bra it breaks my freaking heart to think about it like that. That's what happens. But if I'm going to get out 
and be told, oh, you're a pogue. Who should ever listen to a pogue? But I'm going to go say, I'm going to poop in your mouth. I hope you step on a landmine. I'd purposely shoot you in friendly fire in the head if we were in combat together. I wish your grandmother would get gang raped, but then tell me I'm a disgrace to the veteran community for helping men. If you talk to every single one of the graduates would tell you about their experience. And I guarantee you it's transformation. It's breakthroughs. It's life changing. And this goes on for years after years. There's also the squire program that we run, the father son program. I'll read a quick one from that. This was first Squire program was almost four years ago. This is from a guy, Rich, that was in the first class of the Squire program, sent this message just the other day. The impact of the Squire program gave me the tools to lead my son who was lost and broken and gave him a passage, a rite of passage into manhood. It taught me what it takes. It taught me that it takes more than the word dad to turn my son into a savage warrior. Holy shit. I'll tell you what, just those few messages that those few messages I wrote, I've read three messages, those alone make it worth it. And those alone are having more positive impact on manhood, on men, on the universe, on this planet than some, unfortunately, some dude who went to war and came back out and is telling people they're going to poop in his mouth. And listen, those guys that are talking all that shit, I don't fucking hate them. Yeah, I'll block and delete 80% of them. I'll keep some around just so they could go report back to the hater headquarters. I'll keep them around, but I'll just block and delete. And then you block them, right? Then they create another account, another fake account just to mess you. Said, oh, you blocked me on the other account. That's not very alpha of you. You blocked me. And he's creating another account just to go comment some more on my stuff that I'm a pogue and no one should listen to me. And I wasn't in combat. And he still wants to shit in my mouth, though. He still wants to shit in my mouth. Both accounts want to shit in my mouth. He changed a new identity, but that same identity wants to shit in my mouth. And in, as funny as it is, it's pretty fucking funny. It breaks my heart. And But yet, most of the time, I'll tell you what, it's block and delete, motherfucker. And they're like, oh, that's not very alpha for you to block. Well, I'm not going to waste my, like, I'm going to waste my time. You didn't come. Then they'll say, you're so insecure, you didn't comment on my post where they talked about shitting in my mouth or stepping on a landmine. You're so insecure, you didn't comment on it. And then the once in a blue moon, like, I'll comment one out of every thousand messages maybe because there's no time to just like, I'm going to waste my whole day commenting to these losers. I'm not going to do it. And then when you do comment, oh, I, I really pushed your buttons. I egged you on and got you to comment. I win. You win. But I'm the pogue no one should listen to, but you won because you egged someone on and got them to comment. Awesome. And then they'll, they'll hear you stuttering or they'll, then they'll scroll on their fake new account and find they'll scroll and troll. I got a comment on a video from like four years ago. They scroll and find it. Like they have to go way down. And the funny, oh, here's, here's the kicker. Here is the kicker. The dude, I forget which one it was. I don't remember if it was the, my grandmother getting, I think it was my grandmother getting gang raped. I'm pretty sure. Or it might've been the, the poop in your mouth or the step on a landmine or shoot you in friendly fire in the head in combat. That's definitely a guy I want on my team. That's definitely someone in the veteran community that we can have hold high esteem for. But the one that said he wished my grandmother got gang raped, guess what? You go to their account. First of all, 90% of these accounts are, are private accounts. They're hidden. They have about three or four posts. They have about 17 followers, and they're following about 3,228 people. That's usually the general numbers. But anyway, then you look, but even though their, their post, their account is blocked, you could see like their quotes or like their headlines or their, their links they have. And this dude that told me, he wished my grandmother got gang raped. I wish I would have screenshotted it. I started screenshotting some of the funny ones because they're fucking hysterical. But this dude had quotes of the Bible in there that he's a follower of Jesus Christ and a man of God. And he has some two quotes. One is of the Philippians and one is the, of the Corinthians after he's saying he wished my grandmother got gang raped. Like, fuck, man. Where are we? What men? What is, what is happening to us? Is the, did the military, did the combat, did the war, did they really do that to you? Like, speak out. Like, get some fucking help. Do something about it. Going in and, and acting out like this is not helping you at all. And then quoting the fucking Bible. Oh, sorry. The Bible. My mistake. Didn't mean the effing Bible. It's crazy. Like, and it's, as, as funny as it is, it's fucking serious and it's sad. And that's why the suicide rates are up. And then these same people will talk about military suicides and they're against suicides, but then saying that they wish they would shoot someone in the head in combat and you would step on a landmine. Like, think about that shit. It's fucking crazy. 
And I think it, I really think it's, I mean, you can go deeper into conspiracy theories. I think it goes into our government and a poor leadership in our government, not leading these men this way. Like, I don't remember if, the, I don't think the military suicide rate was that high in the 90s when I was in there. We also didn't have men dressed as women leading us in the military. We also weren't forced to get vaccines in the military. So I want to ask you that. Did you, did you guys get vaccines in the military or did you get out afterwards? Did you hold your ground? Did you get out and then avoided combat because you didn't want to get the vaccine? But why did you do that? And now there's new wars going on. There's more chaos now around the world than there was even back, back in, in 9-11. There's just chaos all over the world right now. World War III is on the brink, it looks like. There's Russia and there's Palestine and all this other stuff and China and North Korea. Why did these guys get out of the military? Why did they stay in? I think it's doing, I don't know, there's some damage getting done or there's a, there needs to be a better process or a system for when these men are transitioning back into society. Because even back when I was in, there was not a time of war and combat. And I remember the transition time. That shit was rough. And that was not even during combat and war. And I was just a pogue. And it was still a hard-ass transition. So I could imagine what the transition must be like for these guys that have been in for a long time. They have men dressed as women that are leading the charge. And they're, they're told they, they, they could use different bathrooms and they're forced to wear masks in boot camp and they're forced to get a vaccine or they get kicked out no matter how long they've been in or how much sacrifice and service they put in to the, to the military and the country. There's definitely something deeper to this and these comment sections show it. They, this shows it like something's got to get fucking done. And if someone has a good, an actual legit military fundraiser that helps with this stuff, let me know because we have a 24-hour challenge coming up that myself and the family are doing and I want one to have a fundraiser for and if like these comments show me that these motherfuckers need help. They're so pissed off that I yell at someone for 15 seconds of someone that signed up for it knows what they're getting into because they paid an amount of money that they think is a million dollars that someone else that has a growth mindset didn't think is a million dollars and they get so upset about it that they want to poop in someone's mouth or rape their grandmother or talk shit about their kids. Like, think about that. Talking shit about children. I'm, and I'm not even getting into the comments. Weird shit about children. They talk weird stuff about children. It's, they, I can only blame our leadership. And as, as much as I like to talk shit and have fun in here, this is a fucking serious topic. And then we wonder why our, our country is going the direction that it is. And people don't know what bathrooms to use anymore. Because we, we just fall into that trap and don't do anything about it. So I think it's a perfect place to end this. Before we actually end this, I wanna, I wanna, I'm not going to leave on that low and somber note because that, that shit is disturbing. The, most dist the comments that these people leave are not disturbing to me because I could give a fuck. Like I'm going to go on marching by and keep impacting lives. I'm going to keep impacting millions of lives. I'm going to keep making millions of dollars. I'm going to keep living my ultimate ideal freak freedom lifestyle, living life on my own terms living a life I don't need a vacation from with my family and my kids and creating awesome humans and my kids who are going to outshine me by a million times when they're older. It's the comments. Those comments don't get to me. The only part of those comments that get to me is seeing that it's coming from these military veterans who, who is, are just, it's just off and something's got to get done about it. That's a disturbing part of these comments. That's the only disturbing part of these comments. Some of them are actually quite funny. Some of them are just fucking straight up disturbing. Like how does a, a grown man and then you see him quoting the Bible or you see him with a picture with their little kids hugging their little daughter in a picture, but then telling people they wish they stepped on a landmine that they would shoot them in the head in combat and they have kids or they're not married and they're afraid to have kids because they're afraid to lead another human life. And then they're talking like this and thinking like this and actually there's no fucking wonder no one's going to want to have kids of you. It's fucking sad. But I refuse to end this on that kind of note. So I want to tell you about the, the Project Creed. I'm going to actually re recite this Project Creed for you to see what the project is about. This is what we talk about and instill in men in the project. And show me which part of these are toxic masculinity, are offensive to the military. This is the Project Creed that we in live by. We set this standard. We live this standard. And we enforce this standard of every man that comes through the program for the entirety of it. And if any man didn't live according to these standards and this creed, they would no longer be a part of the project. And we say, I'm a man of my word. I make a promise and I keep it. I'm responsible for everything in my life and that gives me the power and control to change my circumstances. I lead when called upon 
and follow when I must. I show respect to my fellow man, demand respect back, and grovel to no one. I protect those who can't protect themselves. I leave others better than I found them. I have high standards of expectations, tremendous attention to detail, and am driven to dominate life. I am the modern day knight. That's some horrible stuff right there. That is definitely toxic masculinity. Toxic masculinity right there. Let those words sink in. Start living and digging in those words. That's what we talk about in the project. That's what we work on in the alpha male boot camp. We also do fight training, self-defense training, clearing rooms, uh, going through a kill house, doing escape tactics, public speaking, articulating your thoughts, attention to detail, thinking bigger so that you don't no longer think that $18,000 is a million dollars, having bigger goals, setting bigger goals, expanding your network, connecting, doing hard shit, enhancing your relationships, your family, your fitness, your finances, and your faith, business scaling and marketing. All this goes on during those four days and the years afterwards and the months and months leading up to in preparation, but also how to control your emotions like we talked about by showing you this is what you need to deal with. This is what you need to prepare prepare to deal with. And you can't go punch every motherfucker in the face, unfortunately. We have to uncover their superpowers to test themselves, to challenge themselves, to show themselves what they're capable of, who the fuck they are, what they're made of. Time management, productivity, efficiency, all this goes into it. Some horrible stuff right there. This is fucking toxic, man. You're a pogue. How could you teach someone about growing a business and scaling a business and doing hard shit? You were just a pogue. You didn't do any hard shit. I drove tanks. And I want to poop in your mouth. Not cool, bro. Not cool, bro. Wanted to shit in another dude's mouth. Anyway, I think you get the point of the alpha male boot camps and the fact that no one has ever had a conversation about it and actually done any of the due diligence to find this out. This has been 45 minutes only. I could go on this for hours and hours and hours, but I think this is the place to cut it off. And listen, if you're one of those out there that have have done, talk talk some shit or have done one of your little shows and your little podcasts or your little YouTube videos and you want to have an actual conversation about it, let's do it. Let's do it live. I'll come fly out to you. I will fly out to you and I'll donate to your favorite charity. Let's make it happen. And also let me know about what fundraiser we can use for our next 24-hour workout that can help some of these dudes that want people to step on landmines and want to rape people's grandmothers because that shit is fucked up. And there's obviously some help that's needed in the veteran community. So I want to know what's a, what, what is the best fundraiser that we can do our next 24-hour challenge. Yes, a 24-hour challenge. Guess what? It's fucking hard. And I also, I listen, I'll challenge any of you to come join us for a 24-hour challenge. But since I was just a pogue, I must not be able to do hard stuff. How can I show people to do hard stuff? Come on and find out. We'll do it together. We'll do it in person. Let's make it happen. I'm down for it. I'm going to do it with a hernia. I got a hernia right now and a fucked up knee, and I'm going to do a 24-hour challenge. I'll figure it out. I'll work through it, do what I got to do. So what other, uh, modif- what other foundations or fundraisers are there that fall in line with this? If you listen to this entire show, send me some feedback, send me some recommendations. I also want to hear what you think about alpha male boot camps. And listen, here's my, the final words of advice. Don't babble and, and, and talk shit and comment on the internet and waste your time and ooze your energy and waste your life. And then realize why is your life not where you want it to be? Why do you think $18,000 is so much? You know why? Because you're spending your time commenting nonsense on the internet. Spend your time somewhere else, making yourself better. And maybe you'll understand why $18,000 is not that much. Shit, I lost that much in crypto in the last fuck in the, in, the, in, the, in the first few months. Now it's finally bouncing back. Forget about the stock market. Change your way of thinking. Change your perspective. Be a little more open-minded. And if you need it, get some fucking help. Shit, if you need it, let's talk. I'm actually talking to a guy today, a veteran who saw this stuff that some reason wants to talk to me on the phone. I'm going to talk to him today. Go talk. Call me up. Let's talk. You need it? I'll meet you in person. I'll give you a hug. Hugs for haters. Let's make it happen. This has been a message about the alpha male boot camps. I love the term beating the, beating the beta bitch out of you. And in case no one told you yet today, if you're not one of those people who want to poop people's mouth or shoot their grandmother or rape their grandmother or shoot them in the head or step on landmines, if you're not one of those people, you are fucking awesome. No excuses. <laughs>